from the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hi listeners, and welcome to another episode of Ropecast, the podcast for learners of English. I'm Peter Tischer. And I'm Roger Charlton. Hi Roger. Hello Peter. Peter, um, I've been thinking quite a bit about the fact that you went to school in the United States, and there's... I know so little about schooling over there. I remember you telling us about the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, yeah, think, yeah, we did yeah, that a, a few episodes back. But I'm sure there are lots of other things that um, you could fill me in on. Uh huh. Well, I could try and say a few things that struck me and still strike me as very different from German schools. Perhaps British schools as well. Ah, uh, well, we'll see that. Yeah. Um, one thing. Um, right at the start is the concept of a homeroom. Yeah. When you start school, you go to one room, your ah, class's yes. yeah. room. Yeah. But that is only for administrative reasons. So the teacher will tell you, your homeroom teacher mm. will tell you which classes are not going to take place. Um, talk about an upcoming excursion or teachers who are missing or disciplinary measures right. or those things. But he will not teach you. No. And you can sort of, you know, get your act together and, you know, um, do maybe a little bit of homework still because you spend a little bit of time there. And then you move around the school yeah. to the different teacher rooms. Well, that's similar in Britain. You'd have your... your your own form, the form teacher, and the, you go through the register first thing mm -hmm. to make sure everybody's there or mm -hmm. <laughs> find out who is missing. Okay. And then you move on. Okay, but do you have actually teachers that don't teach you? Um, your form teacher you? would always teach you one subject or other, I think. Because I remember I had a homeroom teacher who never taught me. Oh. It, well, he taught me something, I guess, <laughs> but not a real subject. Oh. He was only there to take care of the homeroom. So that person was my homeroom teacher. Yeah. I knew her, and if I had a huge problem, I had to report to her, whatever, or was, was advised to report that to her. But that was all. Mm. She never taught me any science or English or, or French or whatever, or math for that matter. So that's a whole different concept. Yeah. You, know, you have this home, sort of, in school. And uh, another thing, speaking of rooms, um, what we had was a study hall, which was a part of the library, actually, yeah. that we had, where you could go and were supposed to go and do your homework or your assignments right in there. Mm. So that's what's called a study hall. I don't think any German schools have that. I you doubt know, it. A learning room, Lernraum, sometimes you have that. But I think that's a place that nobody ever goes. Even libraries in German schools are kind of, <laughs> no. you, know, you laugh. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> they, they exist, I know that. <laughs> no, nobody ever goes there. Whereas in the U.S., a study hall, which is a large room, basically, um, is something that everybody goes to mm. uh, when you prepare a presentation with a friend. And if you go there, you need a hall pass. Ah, I see. Know what that is? No. If you're outside a class, or outside of your classroom or homeroom at an hour where you should be in there, you need a hall pass, which is a slip of paper saying this student has permission to walk from place A to place B within the school. This is the reason why he's in the hall oh. and not in his room. I've never heard of that. Yeah, definitely. Every, and if you get caught without a hall pass, you're almost immediately sent to the principal. Wow. I think that's a headmaster in, in, in... Headmaster, headmistress, but principal, yeah. you could say as well. Okay. Yeah. So you get set to the principal. Usually you sit outside his office and wait until the secretary calls you in. And uh, then the principal would tell you how to behave, how to act correctly in that school. Mm. And if you get caught too often, you get suspended. Oh, so you're actually excluded from the class. Yes, you're excluded from class. Uh, in the worst type of suspension, you are not permitted to enter school. You're not permitted on the premises. Mm. And the thing is, I mean, that does exist, I believe, in Germany as well. But it is 
extremely common. In the United States. In the United States. Yeah. It's, it's so, you know, well, fortunately, I was never suspended, but I know lots and lots and lots and lots of people who were suspended, who got a suspension. Mm -hmm. I, I even looked that up once. Out of roughly 50 million students in, in public schools in the U.S., about 7 million get suspended in a school year. That could be just for an hour or two? Or? It can be just for an hour. It can also be an in-school suspension, uh -huh. so you get sent to a separate room, right. which incidentally might be the study hall as <laughs> well. Um, and that's a supervised room, but you're not allowed in class. But um, very often also, you're not permitted to enter the school building for two, three days. Is there any help for students who get into trouble like this quite frequently? That's another thing that we basically do not have in German schools. That's a school counselor. Uh -huh. That's uh, sometimes also called a guidance counselor. And um, well, actually, I have a recording on my, my smartphone yeah. that I can show you where the 2011 School Counselor of the Year, Randy McPherson, says what a guidance counselor does. Oh, right. Want to listen to it? Sure, yeah. School counselors work with students on three domains of development, academic, career, and social and personal. We collaborate with teachers, administrators, parents, and community agencies to ensure that we understand student needs and develop programs that support the three domains. School counselors, I'm not... I'm not at all sure what exactly they do. I mean, helping kids who are in trouble, perhaps, but... Yeah, um, well, not only the ones that are in trouble. Oh. Actually, I, I did a little re bit of reading on that recently, but I know also from, from, uh, from personal experience, of course, they deal with kids who got into trouble for a suspension, but they also advise you on a career choice if you're nearing the ah, end of, the right. sc of your school career. Yeah. They organize guidance events, yeah. or also they are responsible for personal development issues sometimes. So yeah. you can go and see them. I don't know if you have trouble with your parents. Of course, he will not replace a full-blown psychotherapy. But more often than not, he'll orient you in some direction. Mm -hmm. So anything that is related with your personal development as a kid, as right. an adolescent. Whereas in can, Germany, the, the ordinary teachers try to deal with all of these yeah. social issues. And most of the time, they'll just shrug their shoulders. <laughs> so, in Britain, it's certainly a big part of being a teacher these days to yeah. try to cope with all of the extra stuff that happens. I think uh, having a guidance counselor and a school counselor would be a good idea to have in German schools. Well, we certainly have... Um, careers guidance in British schools, but that's separate. Yeah, that we have that too. That's separate. But here it's really, you go to an office, you know where the guy or the lady sits, and uh, they will help you maybe choose your, your university orientation. Well, that was fascinating. I had no idea about some of this. Uh, glad I can still teach you a few <laughs> things. <laughs> okay, let's call it a day then. Let's do that, yes. Okay, bye-bye for now. Goodbye. Listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.